Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, The Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, thelandgeek.com. And on this week's Art of Passive Income podcast, I am delighted, I am excited to have back on the podcast, now retired land investor, Sid Christensen. Sid, welcome. Thank you. Yep. I don't know about retired. I don't know if I like that word retired because I'm still, I'm still going hard. So anyway. <laughs> And, but that's good. That's work, good. So work when I want, when I want. Yeah. Let, yeah. Let, let's define it. So, so just for everyone uh, that doesn't know, let's just rewind the tape and, and talk about sort of your journey. I mean, you started in, you know, we'll just start like, how did you start with land geek? What coaching program did you go into and where have you built your business to where I would just say you're retired? Okay. <laughs> Sounds good. Well, um, back up. In about 2018, I was looking into life insurance pretty heavily, and I came across Wealth Without Wall Street. Um, got on a call with uh, Joey, and we set up um, two policies, one on me and one on my wife, a whole life in- life insurance policy. And um, <clears throat> after that, their program is, you know, find other ways to generate passive income and use the life insurance as your capital to use to put into those other passive income opportunities. And so I started looking at different passive income opportunities at that point. And um, Joey mentioned you, the land geek. And he's like, this is really interesting. This uh, land uh, business where you buy and you sell raw land. And in my mind, I'm like, okay, that sounds interesting, but it sounds like a lot of work. And I looked at it a little bit. I'm like, oh, you're just buying these little parcels and selling them on terms. And um, I just like, oh, that sounds too work, too much work. You got to worry about paperwork and deeds and just a lot of things I didn't understand, right? Right. <laughs> so I'm like, yeah, I don't know about that. So I actually decided to go uh, buy a turnkey rental property. And I was looking at that and I was almost to pull the trigger on one. And this is in a let's see, about 2019, so this is the next year. And so I was looking heavily at the uh, turnkey real estate opportunities, looking at a house, I think it was in Birmingham, just, you know, sight unseen, just uh, you have an operator, you got to trust the operator and looking at buying one of those. And um, something happened in my life that, you know, changed the directory of it. Um, I'm, I'm sure people have heard this story before, but I'll, I'll go ahead and share it. I, uh, me and my family, we like to snow bike. And what a snow bike is, is a dirt bike where you take the tires off and you put a snowmobile track on the back and a ski on the front. And that's so that's so cool. It's so fun. I love it so much. It's a, uh, you know, we get awesome snow here in Utah and we go, uh, you know, a lot of powder days and you go up and there's no one around, just no one's touched the snow. It's just, it's beautiful. And one of these days we were up there in 2019 and it had snowed like, I think like two or three feet and the trees were just packed with snow and it was just an awesome day. It was kind of cloudy, but um, just tons of powder. And so we were just boondocking uh, through the trees. And um, I think my, my dad and my brother were with me, my younger brother, Taylor, and we were, we were stopping, had a snack and then we took off. And um, started weaving through the trees. And my brother, he came behind a tree. And I didn't see him because the trees were so packed with snow. Um, he came and he T-boned me on my left side. And um, it broke my leg uh, up in the mountains. And, why? you know, I threw, threw, threw me off the bike. The bike, actually, the bike was totally fine. I took most of the brunt <laughs> of it. And... Um, didn't realize my leg was broken, tried to stand up and like, okay, there's something wrong <laughs> with right. my leg. Um, and anyway, we looked at it and like, oh yeah, it's broken. So we're up there in the mountains in the snow um, and we're like, crap, how are we going to get out? So my dad, he went up and got on top of one of the ridges, called Life Flight to come and get me out in the force or the search and rescue. And I remember while I was laying in the snow, um, I had been thinking about the turnkey and the land business. And I was thinking like, well, now I have time to study the land business because <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to be able to work for a while because I, I do, I did construction 
uh, for, for my job. And so that was very physical and, um, you can't really do that with a broken leg. And so, um, I remember laying there and like, well, now I have time to learn about this land thing. Um, and, and the life flight came they called me away and I got a, got my leg fixed in the, in the hospital. And, um, when I got back home, I got on a call with Scott Bossman and he talked me through, you know, what the land business was about. And, um, my initial goal was to generate enough passive income to get my wife to be a stay at home mom. And so I'm like, well, if we could get, well, if we get $2,500, a month in passive income, I figured that would be enough to have my wife here full time. And um, being a mom is a full time job. We have we have four kids, and I can't imagine trying to work two jobs, raise these four kids, and you know just having time with each other. It's just it would be tough. And I remember oftentimes we would pass each other because she worked nights, I work in the in the daytime, and we would a lot of times we didn't even see each other. We'd just say hi and bye and and then she was off to work and I was home with the kids just passing the baton. Um, yeah. That, that sounds stressful. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah. And um, so I, that's why I was looking heavily at finding some alternative source of uh, passive income to where she can get home. So that was my goal um, in 2019. We got started with the, uh, I think we jumped right into flight school. We got the toolkit. I went through fr- flight school, started mailing. Um, with Scott Todd and that was just awesome to have just a, a step-by-step direction of what to do because uh, you know there's a lot of questions there's a lot everything you can find on the internet but it's like what is right what's the next steps and that's the hard part right is narrowing it down and finding the next steps and that's what was the the good thing about the toolkit and uh, flight school like we cut through all the fluff we get right to the meat and you just go step by step by step and we follow the recipe. And so I did that. And um, I think we got our first deal. I bought a, a wholesale property right off the bat in Arizona. Um, didn't realize it. it was in a flood zone, had problems with it. But anyway, I just I jumped right into it. And um, we actually ended up selling this one. And the guy <laughs> told me it was a, in a flood zone. I'm like, oh, I didn't know. You know, <laughs> I don't know. I didn't do much due diligence. I just bought it. <laughs> right. And, um, you know, that was a learning experience. But the funny thing is we sold it actually to another person for more. And I said it was in a flood zone. They didn't care. They just liked where it was at. So I'm like, holy crap. Even if you buy a like a headache property, you could still make money on it. And so after that, I was like, this is this is awesome. Yeah. Um, See, no, no one believes me in the beginning when I say there's a pig for every barn. There is yeah. a pig for every barn. There is. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, I buy I buy a. Uh, treasure properties, properties with treasures on them. I, I like they call. <laughs> There's like yeah. trailers and junk, and um, those are people's treasures. <laughs> it's like a treasure hunt for them, and they get excited about it. So, which is crazy, <laughs> anyway. <laughs> but at my first deal, so I bought. Let's see, I ended up buying three properties, um, and it took me probably five months to sell them. So it took me a while to to sell, and so that was probably the. Like, is this really going to work type of thing? And I just kept at it, kept marketing, kept, you know, posting on Facebook, doing all the free stuff because we couldn't afford the other stuff. And um, eventually we found a buyer and then another one and then another one. And then we had people start responding to our offer letters and kept buying properties and buying them. And then pretty soon we were out of money. So then we borrowed money from my parents to do it. And then they were like, what are you doing? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so we had to explain what we were doing and um so they were like they didn't understand it and a whole lot but they trusted me so i was able to buy more property and you know step by step we slowly grown the business to where we were able to get my wife home and i was like wow we did it we, we got you home but i'm like well let's try and get me home so we just you know worked our hardest at it me and my wife and uh you know step by step we finally accomplished our goal so amazing Amazing. So lo- looking back now, like how, how is life different for you? I mean, you're both at home, you're with the kids, you're still working your land business, but how many hours are you in the business? And what, what is life like now for, for the Christensen family? Yeah. So um, typical day is we wake up, we get the, 
uh, kids ready for school, send them off or ready for the day. And, and then I, I come work on the land business. I probably work uh, 20 to 25 hours a week in it. Um, just, for, just wanting to grow it more and, and develop them more. And I actually still work for my dad a little bit just to get me out of the house. <laughs> and <laughs> we, we were, uh, we move dirt. So we do construction where, um, we move dirt with big equipment. And so it's kind of fun. It's like a sandbox, but doing that every day, you know, gets old. So, it's, but it's nice to do it every once in a while. Sure. And I just kind of figured like I'm a professional dirt mover, either in equipment or land. <laughs> so, <laughs> Right. <laughs> so then, anyway, so I do that. Um, and then when the kids get home, I spend time with them, um, do projects around the house. Like I have a big to-do list. I can't wait to get to just fixing things around the house. And I like working with my hands and stuff. And so, um, now I have time to do it and I'm excited to accomplish all my little, uh, tasks that I have lined up for me. So amazing. How, how's it different for your wife now? Because I could imagine with little kids, before, if you were, you know, you were moving dirt with <laughs> you know, doing the construction and she wanted to run out, that's a whole thing to mm-hmm. get four kids out of the house, into the car. You know, it's it's Utah, it could be cold, they got to get bundled up. Just to go to the grocery store could take 30 minutes to an hour just to pick up a few things. Mm-hmm. Where now, someone's home. Yeah. They can just run out. Like, you know, but... It, so is what's it like for her now? Oh, she loves it. <laughs> so she, uh, yeah, I mean, it's an event, right? To go anywhere with yeah. kids. It's like, you got your, you got the Cheerios packed, you got your the shoes on, the coats, and, and then you get there and guaranteed you forgot something. Some kid has forgot their shoes or their coat or, you know, just something's bound to happen. And so it just like they said, just to go to the grocery tour store, it's like a, uh, an hour long event just to run and grab some eggs. But now it's, it's nice. She could just run and do that and come back. And um, she's not worried about having to get, you know, a babysitter lined up and whatnot. So it's nice to, that she's able to run, do things. I'm able to run, do things and not have such a time constraint uh, on our, uh, on our, on our own time, which is nice. And it's, I mean, it's, we have more time with each other. We're, uh, constantly, you know, doing things as a family now, instead of just, you know, getting home, eating dinner. All right, let's get the kids to bed. And I mean, that's that alone. It's still an event to get the kids to bed, but sure. there's two of us. So <laughs> it's like, all right, bedtime. It's, you know, it's an event to, to do all that, but it's, it's nice that we have time to do it and we're not as stressed about uh, money. Uh, as much as we were in the past because we you know now we're just more focused on raising a family trying to teach them proper principles and you know uh, talk about passive income my boys are a little young they don't know what I do exactly um, I'm like I'm selling land and see this piece of property right here on the map how much do you think we could sell it for and they're like five quarters <laughs> <laughs> like, pretty much we bought it for a quarter we'll sell it for five quarters <laughs> right, right. But uh, trying to under- get them to understand it, they're like, "Where's the land at?" And it's just, you know, it's not as exciting to them because I mean, construction is awesome. They love; they can see the dirt moving and stuff. But the land business is just, you know, paper. <laughs> so they, yeah. they're not as excited about it right now, but they will be. <laughs> they will, yeah, they will be after their first bad job. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> I, I, you know, it's so funny because Joey's daughter is, you know, Annie is in high school and she started the land business. I think when she was 14, she's 16 now. I, I mean, I think she's at 2000 a month in passive income. That's, that's a, a lot of like, that's a ton up, of money for that's that a age. Ton of money for, yeah. At that age. Right. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, it's, yeah, it's incredible. Okay. So tactically speaking, right. If I'm new, I'm listening to this. Why are you successful? What is the difference between, you and, and other people that, that start the business, they get frustrated, like, screw it, ATM investing. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, looking back, I've had my fair share of mistakes in invest investing. Um, I remember my we, we had some invention that we came across, and we went through the motions. We got a patent on it, and we had this company say, we're going to get a patent, and 
we're going to make all this money. And, um, you know, there was no like, like how, and we didn't understand the process. And so we got this patent, but we didn't know how to go any further from there. So it was pretty much just, we bought the patent and then it died because we didn't know what, what else to do. There wasn't a step a roadmap. And, um, so that was a mistake we've had. And there's a few other mistakes, but not like anything like the sink our ship, so to speak. Um, but this land business, um, because I had a path set before me, I knew what to do. And I've seen other people doing it um, as examples. Um, I knew there was something to it. And once I did my first deal, um, you know, bought and sold the property, I'm like, okay, this, it actually works. I just need to stick to it. And there's there was hard times. Like, you know, you look at the, um, you, you have expenses at first and you look at the money going out versus coming in and there's a lot more going out than coming in. So that's, that's hard to, you know, swallow at first is like, okay, we're, we're putting all this money into it. Is it really going to work out? And I think, um, just doing the small steps and just, uh, trusting the system is what helped me the most is just, okay, I just got to stick with it. Just do step by step, just do the small things and keep moving forward. And, I mean, this, just doing that is hard with anything in life, but um, because there was a path laid out, I had a direction. And I think that was maybe the main difference uh, for me versus like that invention and patent. I had no, no direction. So now that I had a direction, I knew exactly what to do. I just needed to trust the system, stick with it and um, know that it will work out. Yeah. I mean, you know, and you also made a big bet on yourself in coaching. Which which coaching program did you go into? I don't know. It was, I think it was, I don't know, was one. <laughs> it was just coaching. I think yeah. it was a couple months after um, flight school. I went to a boot camp and I had a few sales uh, be- before then. And I had a sale right at boot camp, I remember. Um, and then boot camp magic. Yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah it really works. <laughs> yeah. And I remember, I, I do remember testing a few like sales calls on a few people. I had a few people like get mad at me because I was too pushy. So you got to kind of figure out like how to sell, you know, get, get in a groove. I remember after uh, one of those, after one of the days of uh, boot camp, I called a guy and really tried to push a property and I'm like, well, that didn't work. <laughs> so, <laughs> Cause he got like way mad, way frustrated. never heard from him again, but, um, this other lady, um, I sold the property to her and I was able to, you know, just, it takes practice to learn how to sell land. And, um, you know, you know, she, uh, it's crazy. She had a, a brother in jail or something and they wanted to purchase this land and the brother in jail said, just buy it. I'm going to be out soon. And so she put the down payment on it and, and then they made a few payments and defaulted, but, um, I needed that sell at that time because it gave me so much more, so much confidence uh, in the, in the business, you know, and every sell starting out is just like such a confidence booster. Um, and you make mistakes, but then you get some wins and you slowly, you know, move forward. But I think the coaching program, I don't know. I don't know. You had more than one, but it was the next step, I guess. In yeah. You know, there's just, there's just levels of, of, of one-on-one coaching there's like order of magnitude and there's epic which is you know the 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 one which you go into elite week which we don't really talk about oh uh, too much so i think i think you did the order of magnitude one. who who was your coach again eric eric okay yeah uh-huh. what, what was that like because you know again in the beginning it's hard to sort of stay emotionally stable when you start a new business you've got all these things going on you got four kids you got a wife you want to retire You've got money going out. You don't have enough money coming in and it's, it can be frustrating, you know, but having someone to help you stick to that recipe and, and keep sort of helping you go through those challenges, uh, not just tactically, but also emotionally. I mean, what was that like? Well, it was just like having a, you know, support system in your back pocket. I remember I had a question on a, I was looking at buying three properties um, and it was a, you know, at the time it was a huge deal for me because these properties I'm buying them for a really good price. I'm like, at this point, I know I could sell them for a good price. And the problem was, is they were, I think it was a joint tenants of uh, ownership. Right. And it's just a simple question. I'm like, how do you do that? Um, and I called up Eric and he's like, well, you know, there should be a termination 
of joint tenancy you need to record before the deed. I'm like, oh, that's it? And it was just so simple. So I remember doing that with Eric. I'm like, oh, that's just, it's so nice just to have him. Uh, it was just a quick question. But, you know, I could have spent, you know, two or three hours researching this on the on the computer, trying to figure out, you know, what. And then I'm like, is this right? Still, in the back of my head, I'll be thinking, is this correct? But with Eric, I got an answer instantly. And I was able to buy those those three properties. And I sold them and, um, and resold them after people defaulted on a few of them. And, you know, just <laughs> – it's just having that in your back pocket was nice. And then having the – I think you have like 60 modules that you work through just to go in a deeper dive on due diligence, um, pricing. Um, I can't remember them all, um, but uh, it was nice to go through week by week and have something to work on to sh sharpen the saw to, to make you a better land investor. And I'm actually starting to go through them again now just to see if I pick, could pick up any other nuggets that I've missed along the way just to tweak my business and, I'm always listening to the podcast and just looking for new ideas, new ways to be better at the land business. I love it. I love it. What are you doing now that now that you're out of coaching that you're like, oh, this this really moved the needle for my for my business? Hmm. I'm gonna think about that. Yeah. Doing now. Um or are you just are you just sticking to the fundamentals? I'm just, I'm, more of it. I'm just sticking to the fundamentals. I'm doing more, like I'm buying more land, but it's still the same fundamentals. Um, I, I try, I'm focused on, I, I'm focused my sales on terms. I'm yeah. trying to sell everything on terms. Um, I get maybe two cash sales a, a year, <laughs> not very many, um, but I price my properties because I want, I want people to be in terms um, because that's, I think Tate says it's a, they're like ATM machines. And it, the more ATM machines you have, the, the more money you'll have coming in. So, you know, I, I like to have the opportunity or have properties be on terms because I'm like, okay, with this property, I could get this much passive income and, you know, I could do that for 72 months or whatever. Okay. And then if people default, I can start it over. And it's just like getting like, they're like ATM machines that just keep printing money for you. And I look at land as like an asset that I don't want to lose. So I, I don't want to ever sell for cash. So I'm always trying to sell on terms. Um, you know, I do. I mean, every once in a while, people offer cash and I'm like, oh, yeah, I'll sell it for cash. I mean, you're selling you're, you're I'm selling at a higher cash price, but, you know, it makes it worth it at that point. But I think yeah, that's so I, yeah, I'm really yeah. focusing on that right now on the terms. So I, I do think terms is the antidote to financial anxiety, that, that passive income every single month, because you can. You can forecast it out. If something happens, right? Like, God forbid you get sick or, you know, there's something happens and you have to take your eye off the business for a little bit. You've got runway mm -hmm. yeah. to, to do it. And, you you know, cash sales are great, but then it's just another job of, okay, now I get another cash deal. Now I get another cash deal. And, and they're not as dependable as the cash flow. I, I'd way rather have cash flow than mm -hmm. cash. And then if you need money, well, okay, I can sell a note or two. Yeah. And and then in the the math is amazing when, when you look at it. I mean, emotionally it's hard to do for sure. Yeah. Nobody, yeah. Wants, nobody yeah. wants to give it up. But <laughs> you know, just because it, you know it's the most rational thing to do, it may not be the most reasonable thing yeah. to do. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I remember way. when it starting out, it was nice to get cash sales because you needed that influx of cash to to purchase land. And then um I don't know. Finding money for this has been easy. I mean, I, I offer, I think it was like 8% interest um, pay, payments and, um, you know, sometimes 6%, but that's like awesome for people because, you know, the bank is giving them pennies. I mean, the interest rates have gone up a little bit for like CDs and stuff, but, um, you know, I, it's easy to beat that and people are excited about that. And it's, you know, my parents, my wife's parents have been really good to invest in the business. So at first it was really nice to get that influx of cash, but now with terms, focus on terms, I have, I have an idea of how much money I want to spend on land every month. And with that money, I want to have create this much passive income just to keep the, the business flowing as it is now, but also growing. So I kind of, I don't know, reverse calculated it to figure out like where I wanted to be and all that with the terms and notes. I love it. 
I love it. So what's what's your your one tip to a newbie investor? Um I just you gotta stick with it. Um I was gonna I have a few tips of the week, but one of them I was thinking about this quote and I'll just I'll just say it now. Um yeah. it's by uh Heber J. Grant. Um and uh he he says that which we persist in doing uh, becomes easier, not that the nature of the thing has changed, but that our ability to do it has increased. And I love that quote because everything we start, it's always hard. Uh, when we first start, it's always hard. The land business is hard to start. But if you persist in doing it, just keep at it, keep learning, keep you know sharpening the saw, that thing will get easier. Just like like lifting weights, anything in life, that the thing that you focus on, you'll eventually make it work. But you got to put in the your reps, right? You got to put in your yeah. time, you got to put in the effort, and you know it. That thing will become easier, more natural for you. So I think you know those new uh, land investors, you just got to stick to it. You just got to um, continue to learn, continue to grow, try different things, just test the market. If things aren't selling, you got to test the market. That's one thing. That's always being brought up, you know, in, in our business is like, what's working, what's not, you know, how can we change things? It's That's a constant thing, but you just got to continue to, you know, persist in doing those things. I love it. Such, such wise words. I'm, I'm stealing that quote. That's such a great, <laughs> that's such a great quote. I'm, I'm going to put that in the, uh, the digest. Perfect. You know, uh, for, for this week, for sure. All right. Well, Sid, your, your mentorship as always has been invaluable, but now we're at that point. Where I'm going to ask you for your tip of the week, a, a website, a resource, maybe another quote, a book, something else actionable for the art of passive income listeners to go improve their businesses, improve their lives. What have you got? Yeah. So I, I mean, this, this tip of the week, I've had a hard time coming up with it because all the tips of the week I get from this podcast and I <laughs> apply them. So um, I'm not sure if this one has been brought up, but when you first start out in the land business, it's hard to keep track of all the like the money flowing in and out. And so I really like using this budget app called YNAB. I'm I'm not sure if this has been brought up before, but you can use it no. in conjunction with Profit First. Okay. What YNAB does, it- Is it W-Y-N-A-B? Yeah, Y-N-A-B. Y-N-A-B, I'm going right there. Okay. Yeah. And so what YNAB does, it um, you can connect like all your bank accounts- and it brings all the, like what you have, your money, well, all the money you have just in one list and one, and then you um, take that money and then you put it in different buckets or budget it uh, in a certain way. And so I used YNAB app with Profit First because um, I, I thought it was annoying to have all these bank accounts set up for Profit First and it just got way cumbersome. It's hard to edit. Um you know, if you ha- it's hard to change things with that. But with YNAB, you can set up all these different categories. So you could have your OPEX account. You can have your op, uh, your like a payment to your investors or whatever bucket you want to divide up your, your money into, your taxes, um, money to buy more land. You could divide it up in these buckets. Um, you know, and every month when I, I have all the income that has come in for that month, I take that and then I divide it up in all these buckets. And then I know, you know, it's just like, it's just like budgeting, but on, you know, a lot easier user friendly. And then you could use it with profit first. I love it because I, I do profit first. And I, of course I've got, you know, all these companies, all these bank accounts, like it's, it's annoying, uh, yeah. you know, to do all the transfers every two weeks and you no, know, this would make it way easier. This is a great tip of the week. I'm, <laughs> I'm signing up today. <laughs> I'm, gonna be, I'm gonna I'm gonna simplify my life so much more. It is uh, simple, and and you can more companies, right? You have like your land business, your other land business, you know, another business. You could have multiple budgets for each business, and you could just toggle back and forth between uh, those different budgets. And so you can keep things it. separate. You don't have to have it all in one, but you can, you know, all the like all your land business stuff. You can go in one. Uh, you have a personal one and break it up. It's I find it a lot easier to use the profit first method than, you know, setting up all these other bank accounts. So, yeah, absolutely. So 
I know which bucket it's it's in. And for cash flow, it's not I'm not doing bank, you know, accounting. Mm -hmm. Bank balance accounting now. All right, this is fantastic. Well, <laughs> my tip of the week is Sid, where should we send people to your site to learn more about you? So my my land site is highcreekland.com. So High Creek Land, H I H H I G H. Uh -huh. H I. Yeah. H I G H highcreekland.com. Yep. Buy some land from Sid. Invest yeah. in some land from Sid. Yeah. Highcreekland.com. <laughs> Check it out. I want to just, you know, give a shout out to our sponsor, which is Flight School. If you want to start out and learn how to be like Sid, schedule a call with our sales team. And uh I know what you're thinking. You know, what about the investment? It ain't gonna cost you nothing. Guaranteed you're gonna make it back 180 days or less. Just show us your work and uh and start being on that that path to not just solving your money problems, but also your time problems. And then you can, you know, do what you want, where you want, when you want, with who you want, and uh channel your 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 inner Sid Christensen, which is <laughs> great. So uh do that. We'll have a, a link to schedule a call and find out if the land business is for you. If you're getting value from the podcast, do me a favor, follow, rate, review the podcast, send a screenshot of that review, support at thelandgeek.com. We'll send you a free copy of Dirt Rich signed by me. All right, Sid, are we good? We're good. All right, I want to thank everybody. And one, two, three, let's let freedom, freedom ring. ring. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Sid. Thanks for listening to the Art of Passive Income podcast. Are you ready to learn how you can start building a passive income without renters, rehabs, renovations, or rodents? Schedule a free consultation at thelandgeek.com forward slash training. Let freedom ring.